Hey guys, Wally Renee here from the Mod Institute, and I want to teach you how to use the new IO Connect scan bodies from True Abutment. These are longer horizontal scan bodies designed to increase accuracy. So the first step I would do is scan, if there is a prosthesis in place, go ahead and scan that. In this case, I'm using the Trios 5. I'm scanning the maxillary arch and the mandibular arch um, prototype prosthetic. These could be pickup prosthetics or um, anything else. And I'm going to capture the vertical and the bite. If you um, now proceed on with the workflow, you then need to duplicate those scans, which happens automatically in 3Shape, and then delete the prosthesis, but keep all the tissue. You're then going to screw in true abutment scan caps. Uh, these are not scan bodies. These are just like healing caps. Um, they have two different styles. This is a mushroom style that's a little bit undercut, which I think I prefer the dome-shaped style, which is easier to scan. Sometimes with these mushroom scan caps, um, the AI delete automatically removes them. And of course, you could turn that off in 3Shape, but um, it's sometimes just easier just to scan it and have it connected to the tissue like that so it doesn't delete them. They have a dome style that is easier to do. And then you mark the locations of the implants, and we're going to go on the lower arch and... Start scanning on the attached tissue somewhere. It could be a marker that you place pre-surgically and then proceed on with the arch. And here we're, again, making sure that those scan caps are connected. Now, it's not really important that this scan be super accurate. We're not actually using these for implant locations. They're just a soft tissue scan, and it's just a reference to align the scan body scan <clears throat> to the soft tissue scan. I'll show you how we do that. So then I'm just deleting a little bit more of those caps and again, on the lower, I'm deleting a little bit more of those caps so I don't have any interferences with my scan body scan. And now I'm going to go ahead and put my scan bodies in. And these are the diving board style. This is real speed now. Now, one thing I will say is uh, this is my first time using these. And you, you really don't need to get where they attach to the tissue, to the implant. You, you just need to scan the center. You, you actually don't need any of that other information. In fact, it's more accurate just to focus on the hexagon. So all of this extraneous stuff that I'm scanning right now is un unneeded here. Literally just scan the hexagons because they don't even need to be correlated to the arch at all. They don't need to be aligned to the arch. And so that sometimes might necessitate you to um, actually start another scan window and not have it connected to anything. So I'm sc starting on the retromolar pad and then I'm coming back to the hexagons and focusing on the hexagons trying to get a few hexagons in the wind scan window at every given time. That's it. That's all you need. So I should have just stopped there, but I went ahead again because it's my first time using these. You do not actually need to scan where they connect to the tissue at all. And so uh, now in this software, now I have my pre-op prosthetic. I have that aligned to the upper and lower arch. I have my soft tissue scan caps and my scan bodies all aligned in space. And this could be sent off um, for final prosthetic design. So now <clears throat> you could do this or the lab could do this. You could open up IO Connect, which is True Abutment's free software. And now you're going to use their software to find the implant positions for um, the MUAs. And so what you're going to do is click in the center of the hexagon, tell it whether you used a small, medium, or large um, scan body, tell it whether you scanned with the uh, mushroom-shaped caps or the dome-shaped caps, for the soft tissue scan, and it's going to then export um, the scan body scan just like that. And you can see how much wider that is compared to the hexagon scan that's shrinking the arch form. And you export that as an STL. And so let me explain what happens in the laboratory software after this. Again, I'm doing it for the lower arch. Click the center of the hexagon, tell it whether it's a small, medium, or large, and then export the caps the rendered caps and those caps that are exported are the actual implant locations um, from this scan. And so that is why you did not need to actually scan any of the connection where it meets the tissue. You could have just scanned the hexagons in space. And so you do not need a soft tissue scan uh, to align with this because you're going to actually just align these exported caps to the soft tissue scan in ExoCAD. So here in ExoCAD, I'm, I'm aligning the scan body from IO Connect software to my soft tissue scanning, we see this huge discrepancy here um, on this site number 28. 
And that is from an inaccuracy of my intraoral scan. So even under the best circumstances, your intraoral scan, you might find some inaccuracies here. And this is the whole point of shrinking the arch form and doing these hexagon scan bodies because we're not actually using those locations. And even if I tell ExoCAD to just best fit match using only the scan caps, so here I'm selecting these surfaces, I'm gonna invert it and then perform alignment again. I get the same discrepancy on that site 28 showing that we have, and let's just go ahead and slice it and measure it. We have like a few hundred microns discrepancy there, but that would cause lack of passive fit. So then we merge the top and then we go through the, just the merging of the scan bodies. And now it's, it, ExoCAD is using the exported IO connect caps as the implant locations, not your soft tissue scan. That was really just to um, align to the tissue for your tissue pressure and stuff like that and your, and your occlusion. It's not really for implant locations. Um, the intraoral scan just really of the soft tissue is just for soft tissue. Um, so here we're going down on the lower and doing the same thing. And this process of designing the all on X prosthetic is super easy at this point. Um, and there's about six or seven different ways to do this. I'm using a, a kind of an older style way where I just have a wax up that's already been imported in that I did beforehand. Um, and ExoCAD is just gonna simply cut the locations of these implant MUAs. And here we're using True Abutment's direct to MUA screw. Um, so what's gonna happen here is the software is going to take that wax up, which was just a solid wax up with no holes in it, and now cut the implant screw channels, the uh, direct to MUA connection and the perfect screw connection for their uh, direct to MUA screw. And so let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next, next, next. And let's take a look at the prosthesis here once I get ExoCAD to render the final. And so here's the final merge part, which is in this kind of Ninja Turtle green. And if I rotate and look, now we have the direct to MUA caps cut in and we have uh, perfect little screw channels. Let's zoom in here. See, perfect little screw channels for their direct to MUA screw. And then this could be 3D printed as a, as a trial prototype or milled in zirconia. Here we're uh, 3D printing it for, a, for a, a nicer prototype here. And we're gonna go ahead and just passively screw this. And look at this amazing artwork by Dr. Defee here. This is just incredible. Anyway, I hope this uh, helps understand the process of what these are for and why we use them. And I, again, I think these are a game changer for those of you guys who have um, older scanners and, and have struggled scanning long parallel sided scan bodies.